Hi, this is Chris. With the release of the last video, which finished the design of a floating point addition and subtraction circuit, I've covered three of the four basic arithmetic operations, addition, subtraction, and multiplication. The only basic arithmetic operation remaining is division. This video starts that discussion. Just as addition and subtraction mirror each other, so too do multiplication and division. Let's start by reviewing the steps which are needed in the floating point multiplication circuit. The circuit needs to calculate the sign of the product, add the exponents of the multiplicand and multiplier, multiply the significands, if necessary, renormalize the product of the significands and add one to the sum of the exponents. Round the significand and construct the 16, 32, 64, or 128-bit return value. Floating point division mirrors these operations. Calculate the sign of the quotient. Subtract the exponent of the divisor from the dividend. Divide the significand of the divisor into the significand of the dividend. If necessary, renormalize the quotient of the significands and subtract one from the difference of the exponents. Round the significand and construct the 16, 32, 64, or 128-bit return value. For now, I'm going to ignore a lot of the details which have been discussed in previous videos. Handling of NANDs, infinities, and zeros, generation of exceptions, etc. I will, of course, eventually need to address these topics for division. I'm going to start with something simple that works, add functionality as needed, and improve performance. Consider for a moment how we divide 5 into 3. This is how we write the operation as floating point numbers. 1.1 followed by 9 zeros times 2 to the first power divided by 1.01 .01, followed by 8 zeros times 2 to the second power. For now, I'm only going to focus on dividing the significance. Here's how we perform the long division of the divisor significand into the dividend significand. The first digit of the quotient is 1. The second and third digits are 0. The fourth and fifth digits are 1. At this point, we notice that we've repeated an earlier remainder value. This tells us we found an infinitely repeating digit pattern in the quotient. We can't compute, much less store, an infinitely long quotient. We need to compute enough bits that we can accurately round the binary 16 result to an 11-bit significand. When rounding, we need what I've been calling the x-bar and y-bar bits. The x-bar bits will become the rounded significand. The y-bar bits exist in two parts, the most significant bit of y-bar and the remaining bits of y-bar. If we perform 12 iterations of the division, our quotient will be 1.00110011. Now, in addition to the 11 bits needed for the significand itself, we have the 12th digit, which is the most significant bit of y-bar. Computing the remaining bits of y-bar will be discussed later. For now, let's look at another example. What happens when we divide 3 into 5? This is how the expression looks when we write it in binary. Iterating 12 times, the significant quotient will be 0 0.11010101010. Note that this significant isn't normalized. That is, instead of a single one digit to the left of the binary point, we now have a zero. To normalize, we need to shift the significant to the left and make a corresponding change to the exponent for the quotient. After normalizing, we no longer have a 12th digit, which we can use as the most significant bit of y-bar. In order to calculate the most significant bit of y-bar, we need to iterate one more time. This extra iteration doesn't harm the previous example of dividing 5 into 3. On to implementing a circuit to perform this computation. The working registers I'm going to use have two more bits than the significance. This accommodates the need to iterate 13 times for the binary 16 format. 
Inside and always block, initialize QSIG, the register for holding the quotient of ASIG divided by BSIG. Zero extend the ASIG wire value to fill ASIG. Do the same for BSIG. Now we create a loop to iterate NSIG plus three times. For the binary 16 format, this creates a 13-bit significant quotient. Inside the loop, we test to see if ASIG minus BSIG is negative. If it is, the next bit of the quotient is 0. Otherwise, the next bit of the quotient is 1. If ASIG minus BSIG is greater than or equal to 0, this becomes the new value of ASIG. In either case, ASIG gets shifted left one bit position. Now that I've explained how the code works, I'm going to share a secret with you. The version of the code which I just explained isn't the current version. I presented this old version of the code because it's easier to understand. This is the current version of the code. It does exactly the same work, but it is a little bit more efficient and a little bit harder to read. If you need to, pause the video and study both versions of the code until you can see that the two pieces of code are functionally equivalent. Now I want to examine what gets computed in the QSIG register when dividing 3 by 5. I'm using the same color coding scheme I've used in previous videos. The first 11 bits are the X-bar bits. The 12th bit is the most significant bit of Y-bar. And finally, the 13th bit begins the remainder of the Y-bar bits. For this case, we have enough bits to know that the remaining bits of Y bar are non-zero. That is, we have enough information to correctly round the quotient significant value. What's in QSIG after the for loop when we divide 5 by 3? The most significant bit of QSIG is 0, so we need to renormalize. Also, note the color coding I've used for this case. We have the X bar bits and the most significant bit of Y-bar, but no bits for the remainder of Y-bar. Here's the QSIG register after renormalizing. By shifting its contents left, we've introduced a zero into the least significant bit of the register, which corresponds to the first of the remaining bits of Y-bar. If we stopped here, the remainder of the Y-bar bits flag would always be zero. But we know that this quotient has an infinitely repeating pattern, so the remainder of y-bar can't be non-zero in this case. If the rounding mode is round toward positive, we will get an incorrect result. We don't really need to compute more bits for y-bar. It's enough for us to determine if any of the bits past the 13 bits which we've computed are non-zero. But QSIG isn't the only information we have about the quotient of the significance. We also have the bits of ASIG. ASIG holds the fractional remainder from the division computation. Without proof, I assert that if ASIG is non-zero, then the remainder of Y-bar is also non-zero. The value which the code passes to the rounding module is the concatenation of QSIG and ASIG. This concatenated value will also work for the case when we don't need to renormalize QSIG. On your screen now is the code which instantiates the rounding module using the concatenation of QSIG and ASIG as the SIG in value. When I started this video, I pointed out the parallels between the steps needed to perform multiplication and division of floating point numbers. Because of these parallels, it would be reasonable to speculate that accelerating the division circuit would be similar to the steps taken to accelerate the multiplication circuit. To explore this possibility, let's review some diagrams from videos which described how to multiply the significance. The first version of the circuit was a simple, slow version of the code to multiply two significance. On the screen, you can see a diagram of the logic for that circuit. The block diagram for the current version of the division circuit would be very similar to this diagram. I improved the performance of multiplication by performing several additions in parallel. The existing code computes each bit of the quotient sequentially. The multiplication circuit parallelized the addition of the partial products. There is no analog to this for division. 
In the case of multiplication, the computation of each partial product was independent of the computation of all the other partial products. This isn't true when we compute the bits of the quotient significand. We need to re-examine the loop which computes the quotient. Each time through the loop, the value of a sig is changed. We can call the value of a sig when we enter the loop a sig sub zero. At the end of the first iteration, we have the value a sig sub one. We don't have a single value of a sig. We have a sequence of a sig values starting at a sig sub zero and ending with a sig sub n sig plus three. Each value, a sig sub i, is dependent on all the previous values of a sig. This makes the computation of a sig, and consequently the computation of q sig, hopelessly sequential. Dealing with sequential computation of the quotient brings with it a host of issues which will take several videos to discuss. Before going, I'll leave you with a study question for next time. Why does using ASIG in place of computing the Y-bar bits result in correct rounding? As usual, the comment section gives the location of the GitHub repository for the code described in this video. Please share this video with friends and colleagues who might have an interest in this series. Questions and comments are welcome in the comment section. If you found this video useful, please click like below. While you're at it, subscribe to the channel then click the bell to be notified when new videos are available. Thanks.